Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to The Fragrant Bunker. Today we're going to talk about the top 10 perfumes for St. Valentine's Day. The holiday of love. It's not just the time of year where we think about love the most, but it's also the time of year where brand marketing pushes it onto us the most in terms of buy a perfume for your loved ones. You don't necessarily have to buy a perfume for anybody. You can buy it for yourself or just use the ones you love the most that you have at home already. No need to spend a penny. But which are my favorites for St. Valentine's Day? Let's get to it. First, subscribe if you haven't already. Join me on Patreon, Super Deco Ball spelled together on Patreon. Thank you to all my patrons who have already pledged. My first perfume is a little bit of a joke. It's a whimsical one because it has love in its name. However, it is a light fragrance, meaning... I don't know. I guess we're going to touch base on all sorts of facets of love, from innocence to platonic to passionate to obsessive to maybe physical attraction that is not love because sometimes we also get confused you know what i mean like when is love love and when is it something more or something less but we let's begin with the innocent one and that would be i love love by moschino in fact you see it says i love love <laughs> There's love all around. So it's a little olive oil, very much. Uh, the original version was black and red. It's still in production. It's a totally different smell with cyclamen. This is a fresher version. It's kind of like uh, a cologne citrusy type of fragrance. Very delicate. Hints of roses in there. But I really enjoy this one. Actually... This is a bottle I purchased the month it was released many, many years ago. And I still have a few drops. I don't want to finish it because, you know, it's been reformulated since. Euro Italia is the manufacturer of this one or the distributor, better said. And um, you can still get I Love Love. It is a little bit more watered down. How can it be already? How can it be more watered down than it already was in its original form? Mm. I think nowadays it's more citrusy. This one has a little bit more of a woodsy dry down, which is really, really beautiful. It's kind of fresh and woodsy at the same time. Very Y2K era fragrance. But of course, the name says, I love love. You would think because it says, I love love, you would have also some red color over there, you know, symbolizing a heart. In fact, if we take olive oil's head off, uh, you do see a heart shaped collar for olive oil's dress right there whimsical little moment not everybody sees that you got to take the head off look at it from top bottom and then you see the heart this is the smell of innocence it's a very innocent platonic teeny flirtation love affair you're like you know you're dating for the first time you think you love that person hey in some cases you end up marrying them having kids together spending the whole life together but most of the times it's one of your first loves that you kind of forget later on in life and you move on but we begin slow the innocent love i love love by moschino the second one is a tribute to the love of perfumery done on a dime on a budget perfume on a budget but made for the love of this brand and also made for the love of perfumery itself it is it was back then a very conceptual fragrance very simple fragrance but it was also a hugely popular fragrance in the 90s still in production today still really beautiful today in all of its um iterations available as eau de parfum and eau de toilette reformulated but still smells divine to me and that would be cabotine by gray now cabotine is it's all about that ginger lily accord which is really hard to synthesize because it grows in the himalayans really high high up there blooms seldomly and to get the oils out of it super hot so they synthetically manufactured uh the oil the essential oil or the extract of the ginger lily and and created this beautiful beautiful smell that we have today not to everyone's liking but why does this have to do with saint valentine's day okay 
I believe that love is not just the love that we take from people or give to people, but sometimes it's also a love of inanimate objects, like, for example, perfumes. Like I said before I, pre before I presented this fragrance to you, I said, you know, this one is, was made for the love of perfumery. They were on a budget when they made it. Grey was not doing that well as a brand back then, but they just really wanted to release a, um, a younger version of Cabocha. Cabocha was the famous fragrance representing uh, Madame Grey or the Grey brand, so we got Cabotine. Cabotine is a green joy. It's if green could, if the color green could be turned into the smell of joy, of joyfulness, it would be Cabotine. It's hard to deliver joy in green. Green is usually the color of austerity and some sort of dryness, even though sometimes it does resemble grass, but Cabotine manages to turn green into a whimsy. Playful, the promise of spring, and with spring comes new love. This is the smell of a fresh love, fresh love affair, flirtations, butterflies in the stomach while you're going to, on a date with the person that you're intrigued by. There's potential for love here. This is why it's a great St. Valentine's smell to me. Now, the next one, uh, oh, and by the way, just to mention, Cabotine falls under the cheapy uh, level, uh, I would say, nowadays, you know. I got a 100 ml bottle. This is, by the way, the Eau de Parfum concentration. Uh, I got it for about, I can't remember, $12 maybe? I mean, like, if you're lucky, you can really score it for a very, very, very good price. So this list is not just, you know, expensive perfumes. There's a little bit of everything and for a little bit for everybody. The third fragrance um, has the shape of a heart. <laughs> so, and it is coincidentally also a testament to the love for and of Thierry Mugler, right? So Thierry has passed away, unfortunately, but this is the last fragrance made under his name in the mass released realm of fragrances of Thierry Mugler, not in his uh, niche collection. This is Aura by Thierry Mugler in the Eau de Parfum concentration. It has the shape of a heart, an alien heart, maybe a futuristic heart, but of course, beautiful little object, especially this one is if you're going to gift somebody your heart, you gift them the heart of aura. Now, not only is the shape really very St. Valentine's appropriate, but also the smell with its rhubarb opening. It's almost like a fresh drink that you would have with the person you meet up in the afternoon. It's like an afternoon breezy that you see we're still in that innocence realm. We're going to get to the less innocent part later on in this video, but for now we're kind of slowly stepping into it. And um, this is the afternoon, early to late afternoon. Let's have a little rhubarb drink together, get to know each other in the sun on those rare days when February you still have sun, because we're the St. Valentine's Day, it is February after all. Not everywhere in the world is February a warm month. In some parts of the world it is. But that kind of rhubarb accord with all its woodsy bass notes makes aura. It also has, a, well, I've reviewed this one on my channel. Go check it out. A lot of time travel involved in this one. There's also, you know, have, have you ever tried the cinnamony red a bubble gum. Um, it has that sort of rhubarb, cinnamony, clovey vibe going for it. Apple as well. So it is spicy, but also fruity fresh. Making it just that much intriguing for heart palpitations. If you're intrigued by someone and, you know, they make you feel giddy and you're excited to see that person that you're going on a date with. So uh, I think this one smells the best if you're a little bit excited. Uh, if you're kind of bored, this one doesn't smell so good. But it mingles very well with my chemistry uh, and with my mood and vibe if I am a little bit excited. Uh, that's when this one smells the best. If I'm bored or moody in a bad mood and I spray Aura, it doesn't smell good on me. It's great for an affair. Number four is the epitome, the symbol, the highest symbol of love that we have in perfumery. 
as of late, now we know perfumes exist since hundreds, maybe even thousands of years, but within the context of us, our society, our pop culture, these several decades and generations that we know of as the time that we have lived in, more or less, the epitome of love, as expressed through the royal family, Lady Diana's wedding to Charles, uh, well, we all know that she allegedly wore Quelques Fleurs by Oubigan. Quelques Fleurs by Oubigan is a highly floral fragrance uh, from the early 10s. I mean, this thing goes, this thing is over 100 years old now. And you have so many flowers in, in here. but And yet, in its current formulation, I do have the regular, uh, the l'original, quelques fleurs original, here in its Eau de Parfum concentration from Loft Monaco. They purchased to be gone, and they're the manufacturers and distributors of quelques fleurs at the moment. They have rendered a beautiful, beautiful version of quelques fleurs. I adore this one. Yes, it's more of a spring scent than a winter scent. But again, it's the promise of love. It's the promise of spring. Flowers will bloom and blossom. And truth be told, it is a very ambrosial smell. There's a warmth in here that encompasses something. It goes beyond the concept and notion of being cold outside just because it's February. The ambrosial accord in this fragrance allows it to warm up the senses. And yes, it is a wedding. It is the highest form of celebration of love when you get married. Still in that innocence realm, I'm, I want to say, because, you know, technically, you're supposed to have all the fun after you get married, right? But, you know, depends. Depends what culture and religion you're of. Or if you're of no religion, you don't need the wedding at all to have that type of fun, right? But keeping it family friendly, this one is the number four, and the the, ambro the ambrosial sense of pure love that is in Quelque Fleur is just divine. I adore this perfume, and it's perfect for St. Valentine's Day. Perfect for St. Valentine's Day. Dare I say it's also perfect for yourself? Like, I'm going to marry myself on St. Valentine's Day. I'm going to feel my own oats. I'm going to wear Quelque Fleur for myself on St. Valentine's Day. Thank you very much. See you all the next day because I have something to do with my... <laughs> Moving on. Now we're slowly... Well, we, we got married. Now love starts consuming itself, doesn't it? And I want to say the first one reveals a dirty side, the tuberose. And the tuberose is also powdery and sensual, and you can't get enough of each other. Well, here's another cheapie for you. Another love of my life. There you go, love mentioned again. Lulu by Cacharel. Love this beauty. This is the spray version. Oh my gosh. Powdery tuberose, what can I tell you? It's passionate. It's naughty in just the right way. In fact, the advertisements for Lulu back in the 80s were very precise and particular. Inspired by the 20s and 30s, there is this actress, singer slash dancer. She's mysterious. She is all over the place, mingling, flirting with people, passionate. She has a goal. Nobody knows her secrets and mysteries, but she plays everybody. And she consumes it all because she has the lust of life and success, but it's very sexual. The tension in Lulu is amazing. Gorgeous St. Valentine's Day fragrance, and it does not break the bank. Now, the next one is more dangerous because it might at first glance smell simple, maybe even innocent, but there is iris and orris root in there, very powdery, very makeup-y, but cold and calculated, almost like a Hitchcock blonde from one of Hitchcock's thrillers, where love is sometimes used to achieve a goal, or we're not so sure if it's real love, or if one of the characters is just playing with the other one to use them. 
that would be Diyaramu. Uh, this is very illuminated here, and I can't, I'm not so sure if you can see this. I have the 40 ml Eau de Parfum concentration of Dior Amour by Christian Dior, the Collection Privé collection, or back then it was called the Maison Dior collection, and before that it was called Collection Privé, so just, they just keep changing name. I love Dior Amour. It is so understated, so simple, and in fact, not for nothing. It's called Dior Love, Amour, Dior Amour. So Dior Love is the name of the perfume. So love, it's great for St. Valentine's Day. Uh, the name is perfect for St. Valentine's Day, but the smell, apparently innocent, clean, linear, but there's something bubbling underneath that surface. There's a mystery in this fragrance. It's a Hitchcock perfume. I have never smelled another perfume that smells more of a Hitchcock movie than Dior Amour. I adore this one. So it's a mystery. It's a bit of a wear it yourself, try it on several times. Don't judge this perfume from the first 10 minutes, you know, give it a couple of wears and you'll realize it's way more sophisticated than, you know, because sniffing it out of the bottle, especially if you're confronted with the entire Collection Privé range by Dior, you're going to, you're definitely going to veer towards other more potent, strong, long-lasting perfumes from that range. This one is going to kind of disappear in the background because it's not as omnipresent as the other ones. But if you kind of try hard to blend out all the other ones, you'll be tempted to smell the other ones. But try entering a Dior shop, boutique, whatever, that sells all these perfumes and just go straight for this one first. Don't smell the other ones first because they're going to be more powerful, right? Give this one a chance. Let it bloom and blossom and you're going to realize, oh, oh, this little blonde, this little Hitchcock blonde has more to its name than meets the eye. Love a good intrigue on St. Valentine's Day. The next one is the most giving in terms of feelings of love and openness of all Chanel fragrances. And that would be Chanel number 22. Uh, no matter which concentration, I have here a bottle of the 22 Parfum. I have decanted it in a little spray bottle because I travel with it and I don't want this to open up while I travel. So you can, I mean, each concentration goes, if you have the discontinued, long discontinued Eau, Eau de Cologne, perfect. Uh, the Eau de Toilette, perfect. The currently available Eau de Parfum or Extrait, perfect. Each one goes. This is the most giving of Chanel perfumes. It's just so warm. The two, again, tuberose. This is a passionate one, a little bit expensive, uh, but uh, hmm, worth worth the money, in my opinion. I love how number 22 smells. Um, it's like a buttery ylang ylang aldehydic tuberosa cord with vanilla. Yes, they say there's no more incense in the Eau de Parfum. I sense incense in the pure perfume. Maybe it's just a combination of ingredients that kind of goes there. But it is a very saturated feeling of love. Okay, that means there's sexuality there. There's also innocence there. It is mature. It is ready to be consumed. It's plump, like a peach, a fuzzy, plump, mature, ripe peach. That's number 22. It's a beautiful sense of love. Uh, definitely St. Valentine's Day appropriate, but also one of the favorites of many, many, many brides. And why not also grooms? You know, for me, perfumes know no gender. So wedding day fragrances. This is one that people love to wear on their wedding day. Number 22 by Chanel. The next one is niche. So not everybody knows about this one. Uh, and it is, I think, relatively hard to find. But if you can find it, try it out. It is amazing. It just blows my mind every time I smell it. And 
I fall in love with it every time I smell it, but it also is a symbol of love because it is a flower of love. And that would be Gardenia by Isabey. It is a fingerprint magnet, but look how it reflects the light, this gold bottle. It plays uh, tricks on our mind because it's not square, it's kind of shifted. So it kind of changes shape <laughs> as you turn it around. But uh, Isabey's Gardenia Eau de Parfum concentration, there is also an extrait. Oh my gosh, uh, the bottle is a little bit heavy and also this little ring keeps falling off. So it's niche in all its facets because, you know, kind of has a tendency of, <laughs> it's a very heavy stopper, but this is the most buttery, suntan, lotion-y gardenia I have ever smelled. It has that green poisonousy touch as well. It is just beautiful, beautiful. Whoever I kind of sprayed it on, you know, to test it on, like say, oh, try this one out. Everybody was like, oh, okay, wow, I really love it. Uh, it's such a beauty. Uh, this one is the, the, the best perfume to fall in love with yourself with. Like you wear this one for yourself. It's just such a joy, a mood booster, makes you feel happy, makes you feel like it's all gonna be okay. Oh, you know, the bills are piling up. Oh, you know, the IRS is coming. Oh, you know, oh, I gotta do another blood checkup. I don't know, something. Oh, you know, it's like everything is bad. Oh, hold on, let me, let me smell. Oh, okay, it's all gonna be okay. So love as in hope. Love as in never give up on love, like I always say, but also love meaning never lose hope because love will prevail. That's the smell of this one. It is just that beautiful. And because it's so mature and full and plump of itself, it knows what it's doing. It is also carnal. That buttery accord in here makes it also carnal. It also gives it a love that is carnally fulfilled as well. Now, the next one is another cheapie. Wasn't always a cheapie. It is nowadays. And the name already tells us exactly what to expect from this love. And that would be Passion by Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Taylor's Passion is a cheapie nowadays. Yes, it's been toned down and reformulated many times. If you can get your hands on an original 80s formula, especially of the extra, you're in for a treat, but even in its current state, I love it to bits. That powdery, purpley accord in Elizabeth Taylor's passion, it's a dramatic love affair, okay? This is a great St. Valentine's Day perfume because it, it's connected to pop culture. It's connected to, you know, Elizabeth Taylor is not only an incredible actress in movies and the silver screen, but also on television. She's been in some soap operas as well, like General Hospital. Yeah, I do believe it was General Hospital. This one just gives you the... She hasn't really been in Dynasty. That's Joan Collins' territory. But passion smells of Dynasty in the 80s and shoulder pads and drama and telenovela, darling. But with a lot of passion and love. Emotions, you know, allowing those emotions to bubble into the surface and boil over and just like fill out the room it's a wonderful love complicated love but hey no love is fun if it doesn't have a little bit of complications in it and the fact that this one is considered a cheapie nowadays makes it even better it's a fun perfume just to buy also for yourself experiment with it see when it works the the best for you i love it on humid damp gloomy days Oh my gosh, this one really takes the cake. And it's great to wear on dates. It's just a lot of fun because it, it's just out of space and time. It's, it's in its own time. You know, it's very 80s. So to wear this one today on a date is like slightly, you know, disorientating, but in, in the best of ways. I love it. And it keeps the other person that's with you at the table at, during the date or in bed kind of guessing. Just saying, sprayed behind the knee for best effects, not in the area where you want to be kissed because this one tastes a little bit bitter. Now, the last one, did we save the best for last? No, of course not. I love all of these, but we saved the least innocent for last. Remember, 
Our first one was the most innocent, called I Love Love, for the sake of love. We started with innocence, and we're going to end corrupted, honey. Yes, yes, after all of this is said and done, we're going straight to hell, <laughs> because there's nothing left. We have burned like the fire of passion. I mean, in fact, we've worn passion. We've worn Cabotine, Aura, I Love Love, Quelque Flor, Lulu, Dior Amour, Number 22, Gardenia by Isabelle, and all of this to realize, well, we're addicted to love. We're addicted to this drug called love. Love is our opium. Opium is my top, <laughs> let's just say it, in terms of corruption. Uh, fragrance, the pure extrait, the parfum uh, of opium is just, uh, I want to say, the most beautiful representation of lust and uh, a burning desire uh, within love, like the type you can't get enough of. The type of love that, you know, on St. Valentine's Day, you just, you and the person you love, you lock yourselves up in a hotel room somewhere, you do not answer the phone anymore. You do not check social media. You do not contact with, communicate with anybody. You hang on the door outside, do not disturb sign for several days, and you never leave the room because you can't get enough of each other. It's the opium of love. That's like you check in on St. Valentine's Day and you leave two days later and you never left the room for two days that's this that's opium so but you got to get the pure perfume and then you're in for a treat baby so these are my top 10 fragrances for saint valentine's day let me know your top 10s in the comment section down below and let me know what you think about my selection until next time never give up on love and subscribe <laughs>